I made it! What a beautiful sunny day, even though my bike right here was a bit bumpy. I almost fell from the bike and had to carry it over a fallen tree. Talk about ouch moments, right? But hey, isn't that just like web development? Those unexpected bumps while debugging are the ouch moments that slow us down and test our patience. But guess what? Last year, the Chrome DevTools team identified four of these common frustrations. From why can't I debug that till I'm feeling lost in data, we took a deep dive, analyzed your feedback, and rolled out a series of improvements to smoothen your workflow. I will be covering 12 improvements today. Each of them is designed to make UI testing easier, boost your understanding, help you stay focused, and identify performance optimization opportunities. Feel free to fast forward to the chapter that interests you. And just a hint, the top row is my favorite one. They are game changers. All right, enough talk. It's time to explore them in action one by one. Let's kick things off with the Made Easy theme and a bubble tea. Mmm, bubble tea is tasty. Let's head over to our site and search for the one with boba. Uh-oh, there's no result returned. Let's open DevTools and debug that. Look here, the response is 404. Oh, right. Now I remember, the backend team is still working on the API. That's why it's 404. Since we agree on a common response structure, let's mark the data to unblock us. Right-click on the API and select Override Content. With that, paste in your mock data and save it. Let's try to search again to see if it works. Cool, that's my favorite list of tea. A quick tip here, you can mock the response headers too. For example, you can add a new header to test the permissions policy or edit an existing content security policy to test out different security mitigation. Look closer at the list. There is something wrong with the name and the image here. They are not aligned. We should fix the CSS. Let's right-click to inspect that. Oops, the list just disappeared. Aha, uh -huh. maybe it's the Howard effect. Let's toggle that in the Styles tab and test again. Nope, it still doesn't show. Hmm, what should I try next? Oh. There is a new emulate a focus page checkbox here. What is that for? Oh, the two tips mentioned commonly used for debugging disappearing elements. That's it. Let's enable that and inspect the list again. Now it works. Time to try out some CSS and fix that once and for all. Another quick tip here. Adjusting linear transition is much easier than before. Modern CSS support linear easing function. It accepts a number of stops separated by commas. Manually adding numbers is cumbersome. You can open the editor, add multiple stops, drag them around, and test the transition on the fly. As a developer, we spend a large amount of time looking at the code. That's why having some good default settings to help us explore the code would be great. I appreciate that the DevTools now pretty prints minified code automatically. This saved me a lot of clicks, especially when I'm debugging production code. The combination of code folding and indentation markers make it easier to expand or collapse code sections and navigate the code structure. Over the past year, DevTools also added better syntax highlights for a lot more content types like JSX, Angular, view, different JSON subtypes, and more. These seemingly subtle settings are the unsung heroes of our workflow, quietly improving our life with each and every line of inspected code. Mocking responses, inspecting disappearing dropdowns, fixing animations, diving in your code, DevTools empowers every step of your UI debugging journey with ease, speed, and efficiency. Next, let me show you how DevTools help us understand.
there is so much to learn in web development. Not only do we need to learn different syntax and rules, we need to understand the relationship and why our program throws errors. CSS is a tricky one. There are tons of old and new CSS properties. Not sure about you, but I certainly can't keep up and can't memorize all of them. Like this one, what is scroll timeline? User select, margin block, doesn't ring a bell, but I would love to learn more. DevTools now shows documentation when we hover over the property with a learn more link. We can click to explore further and view code examples. More often than not, I am also struggling to understand why certain CSS rules are totally valid, syntax is correct, but they just don't work. The info icon next to the rules is very helpful. In this example, although the bottom is a correct property, it won't have any UI effect because its position is static. This alone saved me so much time to debug, especially when I have complex CSS. Here is another common one for me. The height property doesn't work with inline elements like span. I can go on and on about the different rules that bites me. A quick tip here. Can you guess the final background color? Well, although it's fun to guess, we can use the Styles tab to understand the winning color and hover over the selector to understand its specificity, which is the algorithm used by browsers to rank CSS selectors by giving them a certain weight in three digits. Let's go back to our bubble tea page. This time, the backend API is ready, so we don't need to mock the response anymore. Let's verify that. Uh oh, it's not working. Looking at the console, the URL seems to be blocked by the course policy. What is that? And how can I fix it? The natural next step for me is to Google it to find the answer. But wait, there's a new icon here. Maybe that could help us. Let's try it out. Oh, look at that. It generates a personalized explanation, a potential solution, and even provide an option to search. That's pretty cool. Back to the console, you can see the data DevTools used to understand the message. In fact, DevTools show you that right at the beginning, giving you full clarity. Let's scroll up to the explanation. Now I know the error has something to do with the network response header, and that needs to be fixed on the server. Let me take a screenshot and report that to our backend engineer. Ha! Huh. While waiting for the fix, I can combine the knowledge I learned earlier to mock just the response headers temporarily. Let's copy the code snippet, look for the URL, and overwrite our response header. Refresh the page, and the error is gone. By the way, you can use that to understand a warning too. Just a heads up, this feature is still experimental and only available in some regions for now. As you might guess, these helpful explanations are actually generated with AI. So, did the explanation make sense? Or did it just leave you scratching your head? Show us your thumb and let us know what you think. We are excited to keep exploring how AI can make debugging easier right in DevTools. Back to our code, when you are debugging with breakpoints, sometimes you might want to understand the current value of a variable. It was hard previously if you have minified code. You need to understand the minified name of the variable in order to evaluate that. Using the source variable would throw an error. That was improved. You can evaluate with source variables now. Another quick tip to help me understand. If you find it hard to memorize the HTTP status code, the network panel now shows a friendly tooltip for that. The same applies to the headers tab. Okay all, let's take a quick break. Grab your drinks and let's relax for a second. Remember, fixing bugs isn't just about seeing tons of stuff. It is also about clearing away distractions and stay focused. That's what brings us to the next theme. Here is another improvement on source maps. This time, instead of using them, 
we want to hide them instead. I mean, probably you have seen this warning before, especially if you install a lot of extensions. Many web applications don't deploy source maps to production. Therefore, DevTools can't load them. The thing is, you can't fix the missing maps and they just add noise, making it harder to spot real console errors. These source map warnings are gone now. Don't worry, you can still find them in the developer resources panel. And if you open a file with source map issues, a warning will appear too. Another annoyance for folks with a lot of extensions is on the network panel. These extensions make network requests and thus show up in the network panel. We receive repeated requests to hide them from the list. That makes sense, and you should be able to do that. Turn on this option, and DevTools will hide all the URLs starting with Chrome extensions. Another pet peeve on third party extensions when doing breakpoint debugging, DevTools previously would step into the content scripts injected by extensions, which is not what I want. I just want to debug and step into my own code. Same goes for the third party libraries in the node modules. For example, I don't want to debug the code from React, Angular, nor the Material UI component library. I don't want to see them in the stack trace either, as it makes it hard for me to pinpoint issues. Here is the good news. DevTools now ignore content scripts by default, as well as the scripts in the node modules folder. With that, DevTools hides them in the stack trace and you won't be stepping into those files anymore. Look here, DevTools gray out the ignore files too. In case you still want them, you can right click to unignore them. With more stuff hidden and ignore, we have a better chance to identify the root cause and spend time improving the site's performance. That's what we are going to talk about next. This is how I feel every time I need to debug performance issues. The performance panel is packed with a lot of wonderful data, but let's be honest, diving deep into page load and runtime issues can feel like navigating a jungle. We know that DevTools team is at work this year, revamping the panel's foundation and preparing for some awesome updates. And the good news, some new UI features are already here to make our life slightly easier. If you ever zoom in on the timeline and feel like you were lost in space, you are not alone. It used to be confusing because the zoom timeline and the data is not aligned. It would be cool to really zoom in on just the part we care about. Well, your wish is granted. Now you can zoom in with precision, diving deeper and deeper without losing your way jump back to parents' levels with a single click, always knowing that the timeline and data are perfectly in sync. That's great, but check out all these data tracks. I'm losing count. Even a simple web page can have at least eight tracks. Depending on what you are debugging, you might not need the whole orchestra. Maybe you just want to focus on the violin solo or crank out the drums. Let's do that. Click on the edit button, you can reshuffle the track like a master conductor. Move them up, move them down, or even remove them completely if they are just creating noise. Awesome, you have narrowed it down to just the main track. But wait, those entries still look pretty crowded, right? If you know what you are hunting for, you can collapse and hide entries you don't need. Here are the different hides options. You can use shortcuts to hide things quicker too. Here, I'm going to press C to hide all the children, R to collapse the repeated entries, and H to remove a couple of functions. See that? Now the entries that need attention are right in front of our face. No need to constantly scroll up and down to find them. Oh, did you spot those arrows right there? Yep, these are new too. They are like little detectives helping you to follow the trail of events all the way back to the source. Now you can see exactly where things started and how they unfolded. And this is just the start. We have grand plans for performance tooling, 
with four major focuses fueling our vision this year and beyond. So stay tuned. You can be sure there are more exciting innovations are coming your way. Phew! There are a lot of improvements we have covered. Tell us which one you like the most in the comments below. Check out the links of each feature in the video description to dive into them further. In fact, there are even more enhancements we landed last year to improve your debugging experience. It is definitely not possible to cover all of them in this session. The best way to stay up to date with these improvements are through our social media, RFC, blog, and YouTube channel. Remember to send us a bug report or a feature request if you wish us to fix them or improving your debugging experience even further. That's all for now. I wish you a smooth ride in your web development and debugging journey. I gotta go. See you soon. Ciao.